God's grace is sufficient. If you have your text with me, with you, why don't you turn to Matthew, the 16th chapter, the 13th through the 15th verse. Matthew, the 16th chapter, the 13th through the 15th verse. Right now, right now, right now, right now. Lord, do it. Lord, do it for me right now. Lord, I need you to hook me up. Lord, I need you to take care of me right now. Not tomorrow. I need you to do it for me right now, God. Turn it around right now. Fix the situation right now, Lord Jesus. Heal my body right now, Lord. Restore the relationship right now, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Right now. When you have it, why don't you stand with me, Matthew, the 16th chapter, the 13th through the 15th verse. Matthew, the 16th chapter, the 13th through the 15th verse. And it reads as follows. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say I am? Why don't you pray with me for a short moment as we muscle over the title, Do You Know Him? God, we thank you for this moment. We ask that right now you would hide me behind your presence and that you would speak a word so that your people will have nourishment for the week. Matter of fact, for the whole year, oh God, hook us up right now, Lord. We say, have your way. Hide me, do your will. Holy Spirit, do thy will. Holy Spirit, do thy will. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody that agree, won't you say amen? You may be seated. Do you know him? Have you ever wondered what others thought about you? How they felt about you? No holds bar. Uh, let's be honest for a moment, Jasmine. Each of us have the desire to know what others think about us and how they truly feel about us. And if we're really honest, we always want to know if it's something good, if it's something flattering, if it's something hot. We want to know what folks think. Let's just be real. Now we're in church, so don't lie. I see you on Facebook playing the Facebook games. Some folks are playing the number game, and uh, you're sending a number, and you want to see how many things folks can say about you according to that number. You want to know what others think about you. Some of us are playing the word game. We go down the alphabet using a word with the next letter to describe the last person who responded. You don't know about these games on Facebook, right? We want to know what others think about us. Oh, uh, then there's another number game where we send you a number that represents us, and your job is to publicly post what you think about me. The number game. We want to know what folks think about us. It's human nature to want to know what others think about you, how they feel about you, what their outlook is concerning you. Why? Sometimes it's us seeking affirmation. Other times it's us trying to get a full picture, a more complete picture as to what folks think about us. Does it match up with what we think about ourselves? But anybody know you got to be careful with that one because if you accept what everybody says about you or how they define you, you may end up missing the mark according to your life. <laughs> Sometimes it's because we just want to know. We want to know why people say some of the things they say about us, why they act like they do towards us, how they come to the conclusions they come to concerning us. We just want to know. In the text, we see Jesus ask the question, who do they say I am? I can imagine after reflecting on the first 
three years of his life, the major stages of his ministry, him performing miracles, him healing the sick, him feeding 5,000, he thought to himself, what are folks saying about me? What do they really think about me? Who do they think I am? I can imagine that Jesus said, if they are treating me any old kind of way after I've done all the stuff I've done, they must not know who I am. See, I healed them, and guess what? They didn't come back to say thank you. Every time I turn around, they're challenging me about if I'm God, if I know, why am I doing it this way? They, 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 I fed them, and they still walk away and leave me. I'm sure Jesus wanted to know, why do they treat me in such a way? Who do they think I am? Don't you know, church, sometimes life will cause you to want to know what others think about you, what their outlooks are concerning you. Sometimes folks will treat you so low that you have to ask yourself, who do they think I am? Do they think they can walk all over me? Do they think I'm made to be taken advantage of? Do they think I'm some type of fool? You have to ask the question, what is it? Who do they think I am? Can anybody say, you have to ask that question sometimes. Jesus asked the disciples, and guess what? They were eager to respond. They had been hearing all type of stuff, and I can only imagine that they were waiting on the opportunity to give him the tea. They were waiting on the opportunity to tell him what the word was on the street about him. They wanted to let him know uh, what folks had been saying about them. Have you ever had a friend who always knew what the word on the street was? You haven't had a friend who seemed to always know the pulse of the drama that was going on on the streets. As soon as you asked the question, they had the answer. Well, what's going on with so-and-so? Well, child, let me tell you, I ain't the one to gossip, but this is... Come on, you had that friend before. You, you asked them, well, what, what, why are they doing that over there? Well, look, look, this is what I heard, but don't say you heard it from me. Come on, y'all know about those friends who know all about all the gossip on the streets. Well, this was the disciples. The disciples didn't hesitate to answer the question, what are they saying about me? They rolled up to Jesus and said, word on the street is, some folks think you're John the Baptist, who has come back from the dead. Others think you are Elijah, who they never found the body of. Some folks think you're Jeremiah or another prophet. I can imagine that Jesus looked at them with a sense of disappointment. They just don't get it. Let me pause here for a minute, parenthetically. And I want to let you know that you got to be careful of accepting the limits folks try to place on you when they tell you who they think you are. I may have lost you for a minute. This is what I'm saying. You have to be confident in your skin. You have to be confident in your call and in your purpose because folks will limit you to what they know. Let me help you for a minute. I can imagine Jesus said, yes, it's flattering to be called Elijah, but you're limiting what God is about to do through me. I am the savior of the world. Uh, I can imagine President Barack Obama saying, yes, it's flattering to be called Dr. King, but guess what? You're limiting me. What God is about to do through me, I'm called to be the leader of the free world. Let me help somebody. Let me make it personal. I'm saying, yes, it's flattering to be called O.C. Allen III of D.C., but guess what? You're limiting me when you call me that because what God is about to do through me, eyes have not seen it, ears have not heard. Put CCWDC, UCC is saying, yes, it's flattering to be called Baby Covenant, but guess what? You're limiting us with what God is about to do through us by saying, don't let folks use a title or a role to box you in when God has called you to do greater. First G, be careful. Don't let them limit you because you got first in front of your name to say, well, this is what a first lady does or this is how a first lady does. You are the first G. Therefore, you define what God has called you to do as a greater. Don't let others box you in by a title. Folks will limit you to what they know because they haven't seen what God is about to do through you. They will say, this is what you look like, but they don't know the glory that God is about to bring through you. Yes, they say, oh, you look like the prophet is such and such, but they don't know God is about to give you a word for the nation. Yes, they say, oh, yeah, you look like that, but they don't know God is about to use you to draw the masses. Don't let folks limit you. With titles and labels. 
follows. In all your searching, you have to be careful of accepting the flattery. Flattery can box you in, limiting you from experiencing the fullness of what God has called you to. By asking the question, Jesus finds out that the folks are off. They're missing the mark. They're all confused. They don't quite get it yet. Maybe we can understand why some folks was treating him the way they did. They just didn't know. But Jesus didn't stop there. Jesus decided to go further. He asked his disciples, those who were closest to him, those who he had spent a whole lot of time with over the last three years, but who do you say? This time, the disciples were not as fast. They were not as fast in answering. It was like the cat had their tongue. When they had the tea about what everybody else was saying, they were quick to blurt it out. But now that he's asking them, who do you say that I am there? Not as quick to say. I can imagine some of them, while listening to what others were saying, believed and agreed with what they were saying. So they were now quiet. I can imagine that some of them were even afraid that if they said what they truly thought, that he was the son of God, that they would be committing religious heresy known as idolatry. So they kept quiet. I can imagine that others might have been hesitant because they said that if I call him the Messiah, the one that was sent to set us free from the bondage of the Romans, we could be locked up for treason. So they kept quiet. Is there anybody that knows sometimes you got to stand up and speak, even when it's not popular, even when it's not cool, even when you're the only one in the crowd, God is calling you to stand up and speak truth to power. you got to speak up when you know better. But it's, it's right here that Peter steps up to say what he feels on his heart. He says, you are the Christ, the Son of God. Isn't it just right that Peter would be the one to get it right? Think about this. Out of all the other disciples, wouldn't it be Peter to get the right answer? After all, Peter was always on Jesus' left leg. After all, Peter was always the one chasing and running behind you. Peter, in our common day vernacular, I would call thirsty. Peter was too thirsty, and Peter was always the one thirsting after the living water, the living water. Peter was thirsty, and so wouldn't it just be right that Peter would get the right answer? He was always the one in Jesus' face. He was with Jesus. He was learning the hard lessons with Jesus. Don't y'all know he was the one that walked on water with Jesus, Peter. Peter was the one that saw Jesus disclose himself and transfigure himself into three different people. Peter. Peter cut off the ear for a soldier for, of a soldier for Jesus. Peter. Somebody said Peter was right or die. That's how thirsty Peter was. I can imagine that Peter's life song is one of the songs that we sing today. I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, because I need you more and more. If you listen to the words, the lyrics in that song, they reflect what Peter's attitude was towards Jesus. Peter chased constantly after Jesus. Peter shows us something in this passage as he chases after the Lord. Peter shows us that in order to answer the question, who do you say I am, you got to be thirsty. Peter shows us that you got to be desperate. you got to have experience and intimacy in order to know who he is. Church, don't you know that you can be with someone all your life and never be intimate with them? Right, right. Don't you know that the problem too many relationships face today is that folks are together for years, but they lack intimate encounters with each other. And so what they do is after 20, 30 years is wake up one morning and realize they never knew the person that they said, I do to. To my couples, let me warn you, you got to take the moments to make sure the intimacy lasts. You got to make take the moments to make sure the fire continues to burn so that you will know the person that you would. For those who are single, you better count the cost in advance. 
You better count the cost in advance and know that when you get ready to get in a relationship, if you want that thing to work out, if you want that thing to last, you're going to have to put in some time. And that time ain't just your body laying in the bed. That time is you getting to know, spending time, intimate encounter with the person that you're saying, I want to be with. If I'm honest, that's the same problem we have with church folks, y'all. Too often, folks find themselves attending church, but they never get intimate with church. They, they never learn what it really stands for. They don't understand the core values and the core beliefs, what they are. They just know they're going to church. Say amen, somebody. Amen. And so what happens? When they just go and sit in pews, they end up listening to what others say about their church instead of knowing for themselves who their church is. Somebody tells them their church is a gay church. So what do they say? They crumble and fall. Instead of being able to say, no, we are an inclusive church, a church where everybody in the spectrum of the rainbow have a seat at the table. <laughs> When somebody roll up to them and say, no, your church is a self-serving church. It's all about them. They are able to say, no, we are a community-oriented church. We go beyond ourselves and serve the people of God and the dying world. When folks whisper in their ear and tell them, oh, y'all are changing the Bible to make it convenient for you. They're not able to say, no, we're education-oriented. We study to show ourselves the proof. Why do you divide your word? You got to know where you are, what you're connected to, and who you are a part of. If you don't know, you're liable to fall in for anything that the naysayers say. You're liable to fall in for what the blogs say and what the websites say in Nigeria and, and in the Bahamas. You got to know for yourself. They tell you, y'all keep shouting and dancing. That ain't called for. You have to be able to say to them, no, we are a charismatic church and we believe in worshiping the Lord in spirit and truth with all that's within us. You got to have an intimate relationship with the church even so that you won't fall prey to what everybody say. It's in that moment when Peter steps up that Jesus gets pleased. Jesus is pleased and he acknowledges that this revelation can only come from God. It's right here in the passage that we find the question for this moment. Do you know him? Turn to your neighbor and ask them, do you know him? Turn to the other one and ask them with Holy Ghost conviction. I know it's a little hot, but say, do you know him? See, the real problem in the body of Christ is too many folks are seeking after titles instead of looking to have intimate relationships with God. The problem is too many folks are seeking a position instead of seeking intimacy with the Lord. They don't know Him because they want something instead of knowing Him. Instead of serving the people of God with honest heart, that means you know Him. They're busy trying to elevate their name, escalate themselves like do you know him? The Bible says a tree is known by the fruit it bears. What's around you? What are you bearing? Is it all egotism? Is it all self glorification? What's around you? Are people being made whole? Are people beginning to see Christ for who God is through you? What's around you? Who is around you? passage tells us, in all of your getting, be sure to get an intimate relationship with the Lord. The reason why the other disciples couldn't answer the question is they could tell about everything everybody else said is because they majored in the minors. They were so caught up in the mess, so caught up in the gossip of the day, so caught up in the drama of the day. They knew very well the gossip and the drama, but what they didn't know was who they were sitting with, who they were supping with, the one that called them to the table and gave them a purpose. They didn't know because they were caught up in the foolishness. Don't look at nobody in here, but... If you ask them who is he, if they can tell you more about what other folks say he is, then we have a problem. If they can tell you more so what their mama say about who he is, then we have a problem. There are saints who need to stop being children, begin to eat meat, but the vegetarians begin to eat some stocky vegetables so that you can grow up in the Lord. Know for yourself. Truth of the matter, what many of us are placed under the microscope of introspection. 
we fall short of being able to answer this question, who do you say he is? How do I know? Because when you start going through and life asks you the question, who do you say he is? Instead of professing on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. You get shaky where you are. Yeah. Yeah. How do I know when you experience temptation and life asks you the question, who do you say he is? Instead of professing, God will not put more on me than I can bear. You fall prey to the temptation. How do I know when you experience and wanting to give up and life asks you the question, who do you say Christ is? Instead of professing, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. You contemplate letting go of everything, throwing in the towel of everything and yeah. That's how I know. Yeah. This year, the Lord is calling us to know Christ. Not a religious experience, but a personal encounter, a relationship, an intimate encounter with the Lord. The Lord is calling us to know Christ for ourselves. Pastor, how do I get to know him? Well, that means you got to spend some time laying with him. You know how you get to know other folks? You lay with them. You have to lay with the Lord in worship, and that's how you begin to gain some understanding. you got to spend some time in getting intimate through prayer and fasting. Hence the reason why we're on a 24-day consecration. you got to learn the things he loves and, and the things that he dislikes by studying the word and, and attending worship. That's how you get intimate with the person, spending quality time with them, not flaky time, but quality time, substance and time. That's how you get to know the one that you profess you love so much. Everybody that's serving lip service don't really mean it in their heart. You gotta know without a shadow of a doubt that Christ is Lord. I want you to know it's your time to know him for yourself. In 2014, you really, if you really want to go from good to great, if you really want to go higher in the Lord, you got to go deep. The, the same old, same old just ain't going to do any longer. Turn to your neighbor and say, yo, same old, same old 2013 ain't going to do any longer. You got to have substance. You got to have substance. It, it only comes with intimacy. The Lord is requiring more of you. Look at your neighbor and say, God wants more. God wants you to know him for yourself. Not because Big Mama said it. Not because Big Daddy said it. You got to know that that just won't do. Not because the preacher said it. That just won't do in 2014. You got to know for yourself. Not based on Chris's healing. You got to know for yourself. Not Do it. 
We got so many saints falling apart in every angle, every corner. Soon as you go through something, you fall apart. Instead of falling apart, fall on your knees and say, Lord, I yield to you. Lord, I surrender all. Somebody got to learn how to give people this season. 2014, they say it's the year of double. It's time for you to double your age. Stop acting like a 14 year old and act like you're 28. Stop acting like you're 30 and act like you're 60. It's time for you to put on your big boy trunk. It's time for you to put on your big girl trunk. And act right, straight up and act right. Paul puts it this way. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. But when I became a man, I put on a childish thing. Come on, somebody. Say it. personal encounter with the Lord. The churchy folks said, yes, we got it. We've experienced some stuff. As a matter of fact, you've experienced some stuff, but you just didn't know the one that was keeping you the whole time. The one that was sustaining you the whole time. You just didn't know that the master of the sea who heard your despair and cry reached out in the water and lifted you and now safe are you. It's your season to know him. Let us stand all over this place as we open the doors of the church. Let's close our eyes all over this place as we say. I lift my hands in righteousness. You For you are God. I
content of who is able to keep you to present you faultless before the presence of his glory. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. Why don't you give your neighborhood? Tell them Jesus loves you, and so do I. I love you.